welcome back to Whispers of the Guilty. Today, we delve into a case that has gripped a small Georgia town and captured the nation's attention with its complexity and heart-wrenching details, the story of Kendrick Johnson. Kendrick Johnson, a 17-year-old high school student, was full of promise. Known for his athletic talents and infectious smile, he was loved by many in his community. But on January 10th, 2013, Kendrick's life was tragically cut short under mysterious circumstances that left his family and friends reeling. Found lifeless in a rolled-up gym mat at Lowndes High School, Kendrick's death was initially ruled a freak accident. However, as the details emerged, his family began to suspect foul play. Their relentless pursuit of truth has led to a tangled web of allegations, reinvestigations, and intense scrutiny of local authorities. Join me as we explore Kendrick Johnson's story, from the vibrant life he led to the tragic day he was found, and the ongoing quest for justice that has since unfolded. We'll unravel the layers of this enigmatic case, examining the evidence, the inconsistencies, and the impact on a community searching for answers. This is a journey into the heart of darkness and the enduring strength of a family's love and determination. This is the story of Kendrick Johnson. In the small town of Valdosta, Georgia, Kendrick Johnson's story begins against a backdrop of typical Southern charm, where sprawling fields and historical architecture merge seamlessly with the local high school, a hub for the community's youth. Lowndes High School, with its red brick buildings and neatly manicured lawns, stands as a testament to the town's pride, a place where students gather for education, sports, and socialization. Kendrick Johnson and often called KJ by friends and family, was a 17-year-old student at Lowndes High. He was a bright, charismatic young man, known for his infectious smile and athletic prowess. Standing at 5'10 with a lean, muscular build, Kendrick was a dedicated athlete, excelling particularly in basketball and football. His passion for sports was evident in his relentless training and the joy he exuded on the field and court. To his teammates, he was a source of inspiration, someone who pushed others to be their best while maintaining a sense of camaraderie and support. Kendrick's family was deeply rooted in Valdosta. His parents, Kenneth and Jackie Johnson, were pillars of strength and resilience. Kenneth, a truck driver, and Jackie, a school bus driver, worked tirelessly to provide for their children and instilled in them the values of hard work, determination, and integrity. The Johnson household was one of warmth and love, where laughter was abundant, and the bonds of family were cherished above all else. Growing up, Kendrick was surrounded by a tight-knit community. Valdosta, though small, was a place where everyone knew each other, and the sense of community was palpable. Neighbors looked out for one another, and children grew up playing in each other's yards, forming lifelong friendships. In this environment, Kendrick thrived. He was not just an athlete, he was a young man with dreams and ambitions, someone who aspired to use his talents to secure a bright future. At Lowndes High, Kendrick's days were filled with a balance of academics and athletics. He was known to be a diligent student, though his true passion lay in sports. He often spent hours practicing, honing his skills and pushing himself to new limits. His dedication did not go unnoticed. Coaches admired his work ethic and saw in him the potential for a promising athletic career, perhaps even a scholarship to a prestigious college. Despite his busy schedule, Kendrick always found time for his friends. He was the type of person who could brighten anyone's day with his humor and positivity. His friends described him as loyal, someone who would stand by them through thick and thin. They often gathered after school, whether at the local park for a pickup game or at each other's home for study sessions and movie nights. These moments of camaraderie were precious, and they forged bonds that seemed unbreakable. Yet beneath the surface of this seemingly idyllic life, tensions simmered. Valdosta, like many towns, had its share of underlying issues. The racial dynamics within the community, particularly at Lowndes High, were complex. While the town prided itself on being a close-knit community, there were unspoken divisions that occasionally manifested in subtle and not-so-subtle ways. As an African-American student and athlete, Kendrick Navi navigated these dynamics with a blend of resilience and grace. On January 10th, 2013, Kendrick's life took a tragic turn that would forever alter the lives of his family and the Valdosta community. It was a day like any other, with students bustling through the hallways of Lowndes High, laughter and chatter filling the air. Kendrick attended his classes and participated in his usual activities, seemingly without a care in the world. But by the end of the day, he would be missing setting off a chain of events that would plunge the community into a state of shock and confusion. As the school day drew to a close, Kendrick's absence was noted by his mother, Jackie. When he didn't return home that evening, concern turned to alarm. Jackie and Kenneth began reaching out to Kendrick's friends, 
coaches and teachers, hoping to find some clue to his whereabouts. Their search led them to Lowndes High School, where they hoped to find answers. The school, now eerily quiet, was a stark contrast to the vibrant, bustling place it had been earlier in the day. The Johnsons, accompanied by a school administrator, searched the gymnasium, locker rooms, and other areas Kendrick frequented. It was in the old gym, an area used for various athletic activities, that their worst fears began to materialize. Amidst the rolled-up gym mats, a gruesome discovery awaited. One of the mats, usually used for wrestling and cheerleading, held something that would shatter the Johnson family's world. Inside, they found Kendrick's lifeless body, a scene that would haunt them and the community for years to come. The sight of Kendrick, trapped and unresponsive, was a moment of unimaginable horror and grief. The initial shock gave way to a flood of questions. How had Kendrick ended up in the mat? What had transpired in those final moments? The school's administration, local law enforcement, and the Johnson family were all thrust into a whirlwind of uncertainty certainty and speculation. The investigation that followed would be fraught with controversy, raising more questions than answers and drawing national attention to Valdosta. In the days that followed, the Johnson family grappled with their devastating loss while seeking justice for their son. The community, too, was plunged into a state of mourning and confusion. Vigil after vigil was held, with classmates, teachers, and townspeople coming together to remember Kendrick and support his family. Amidst the candles and tearful prayers, a sense of solidarity emerged but so did a demand for answers. The official investigation began under the jurisdiction of the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office. Initial reports suggested that Kendrick's death was a tragic accident, a theory that would be met with skepticism and disbelief by many. The narrative put forth was that Kendrick had climbed into the mat to retrieve a shoe and had become trapped, unable to escape. But to those who knew Kendrick, this explanation seemed implausible. Kendrick was known for his agility and athleticism. The idea that he would have accidentally trapped himself in such a manner did not align with the image of the capable, cautious young man his friends and family knew. Moreover, the mat's tight configuration and the position of Kendrick's body raised significant doubts. The Johnson family, unsatisfied with the official explanation, began to question the thoroughness and impartiality of the investigation. As rumors and theories swirled, the Johnson family took matters into their own hands. They sought an independent autopsy, hoping to uncover the truth about what had happened to their son. The findings of the this autopsy would only deepen the mystery, suggesting that Kendrick's death was not accidental, but rather the result of foul play. These revelations would ignite a firestorm of controversy and suspicion, further polarizing the community and drawing national attention to the case. Amidst the growing media frenzy, the Johnson family remained steadfast in their quest for justice. They held press conferences, organized marches, and sought legal avenues to challenge the official narrative. Their determination and resilience became a rallying point for supporters who joined them in demanding a thorough and transparent investigation. In Valdosta, the impact of Kendrick's death reverberated through the halls of Lowndes High School and the wider community. Students and faculty grappled with the loss, while conversations about race, justice, and accountability came to the forefront. The case became a symbol of broader issues, resonating with those who saw in Kendrick's story a reflection of systemic inequities and the urgent need for change. As the investigation unfolded, the complexities of Kendrick's life and the dynamics of Valdosta would come under intense scrutiny. Friends and classmates provided glimpses into Kendrick's world, sharing anecdotes that painted a picture of a young man full of promise and potential. Teachers and coaches spoke of his dedication and leadership, while his family continued to advocate for the truth, refusing to let their son's memory be overshadowed by unanswered questions. The story of Kendrick Johnson is not just a tale of tragedy, but also one of resilience and the unyielding pursuit of justice. It is a story that challenges us to confront uncomfortable truths and to strive for a world where every life is valued and every question is answered. As the Johnson family navigates their grief and continues their fight, Kendrick's legacy endures, a reminder of the strength of a community united in seeking justice for one of its own. As winter lingered in Valdosta, the chill in the air seemed to deepen the sense of unease surrounding Kendrick Johnson's tragic death. The Johnson family, still reeling from their loss, found themselves at the center of a storm of controversy and speculation. The official narrative of an accidental death did little to satisfy their need for answers, and they were determined to uncover the truth about what had really happened to Kendrick on that fateful day.
say. In the weeks following the discovery of Kendrick's body, the Johnsons began their own investigation. They reached out to anyone who might have information, piecing together the events leading up to Kendrick's disappearance. Friends, classmates, and teachers were interviewed, each offering fragments of the story. The picture that emerged was one of confusion and unanswered questions. On the morning of January 10th, Kendrick had gone about his usual routine. He attended his classes, participated in gym activities, and interacted with friends. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. His last known whereabouts were in the old gym, a place where he often went to retrieve his gym shoes from the rolled up mats stored there. This seemingly mundane task would become the focal point of a mystery that still haunts the community. The official investigation posited that Kendrick had accidentally fallen into the mat while trying to retrieve a shoe and had become trapped, unable to escape. The idea was that he had suffocated after being unable to free himself. However, this explanation did not sit well with many who knew Kendrick. The mats were heavy and tightly rolled, and the opening at the center was small. It seemed unlikely that someone of Kendrick's size and strength would not have been able to free himself or at least call for help. The Johnson family decided to commission a second autopsy. The results were startling. The independent pathologist concluded that Kendrick's death was not accidental, but the result of blunt force trauma to the neck, suggesting foul play. These findings contradicted the official report and fueled the Johnson and families belief that their son had been murdered. With these new revelations, the case gained national attention. Media outlets picked up the story, and activists rallied around the Johnson family, calling for a thorough and impartial investigation. The narrative shifted from a tragic accident to a potential cover-up, and the pressure on local authorities intensified. As the investigation continued, details about Kendrick's relationships and interactions at school came under scrutiny. Kendrick was well-liked, but he had his share of conflicts, as any teenager does. Some of these conflicts, however, seemed to take on new significance in light of his death. Rumors of bullying and altercations swirled and attention turned to a particular incident involving a disagreement with two brothers who were also students at Lowndes High. The brothers, both athletes like Kendrick, had reportedly clashed with him in the past. The nature of these conflicts was the subject of much speculation, but some suggested they had escalated into physical altercations. Despite these rumors, there was no concrete evidence linking the brothers to Kendrick's death. However, the suspicions persisted, casting a shadow over their lives and adding to the already charged atmosphere at the school. Amidst the mounting tension, the Johnson family continued to advocate for justice. They held rallies, spoke to the press, and enlisted the help of civil rights organizations. Their fight was not just for Kendrick, but for all young people who might find themselves in similar situations. They demanded accountability from the school, the local authorities, and the justice system. The community of Valdosta found itself divided. Some supported the Johnson family, believing that Kendrick's death was indeed suspicious and deserved further investigation. Others sided with the official account, viewing the family's efforts as an unwarranted attack on the integrity of the local institutions. The debate became a microcosm of broader societal issues, touching on themes of race, justice, and the trustworthiness of law enforcement. As the investigation dragged on, more questions arose. Why had the initial autopsy missed signs of blunt force trauma? Were there witnesses who had not come forward? And if foul play was involved, who was responsible? The Johnson family hired private investigators to delve deeper into these questions, hoping to uncover new evidence that would bring them closer to the truth. In the midst of these efforts, a video surfaced, adding another layer of complexity to the case. The surveillance footage from the school showed Kendrick entering the old gym on the day he disappeared. The video was grainy and disjointed with several gaps in the timeline. It did not provide a clear answer to what had happened, but it raised further suspicions about the thoroughness of the initial investigation. One of the most significant gaps in the footage was the period during which Kendrick was believed to have entered the mat. The lack of continuous surveillance led many to speculate about whether key moments had been intentionally erased or if there had been technical issues. The Johnson family's legal team pushed for a forensic analysis of the video, hoping to determine if it had been tampered with. As the months passed, the the case remained unresolved. The Johnson family faced numerous setbacks, but they refused to give up. Their persistence attracted the attention of high-profile figures and organizations who lent their voices to the call for justice. National civil rights leaders, celebrities, and politicians all expressed support, turning Kendrick's case into a symbol of the fight against systemic injustice. The focus on Kendrick's case also brought to light other instances of unresolved or controversial deaths within the African-American community, highlighting a pattern of perceived neglect and mishandling by authorities. This broader context added urgency 
to the Johnson family's quest for answers as they sought not only justice for Kendrick but also broader reforms to ensure that no other family would have to endure what they had gone through. In Valdosta, the atmosphere grew increasingly tense. Protests and vigils became regular occurrences, with community members voicing their frustration and demanding action. The school's administration faced scrutiny for its handling of the incident, and some staff members were called to testify in various hearings. The local sheriff's office, too, was under pressure to reopen the case and re-examine the evidence with fresh eyes. Despite the mounting public pressure, progress was slow. The complexities of the case, coupled with the resistance from some local authorities, made it difficult to move forward. The Johnson family, however, remained undeterred. They continued to raise awareness, utilizing social media and other platforms to keep Kendrick's story in the public eye. As the second year since Kendrick's death approached, the case took another unexpected turn. A whistleblower from within the sheriff's office came forward, alleging that crucial evidence had been mishandled or overlooked during the initial investigation. This revelation added fuel to the fire, prompting renewed calls for a federal investigation. The Johnson family, bolstered by this new development, pressed harder than ever for accountability. They filed lawsuits, organized marches, and continued to speak out, their resolve unshaken by the numerous obstacles they faced. The case had become more than just about Kendrick. It was about justice, truth, and the fight against systemic failures. In the midst of their struggle, the Johnsons found moments of solace in the support they received from people across the country. Letters of encouragement, donations to their legal fund, and offers of help poured in from individuals who were moved by Kendrick. Kendrick's story. These gestures of solidarity provided the family with the strength to keep pushing forward. As part of their ongoing efforts, the Johnsons enlisted the help of forensic experts to re-examine the evidence. They hoped that advances in technology and fresh perspectives might yield new insights into what had happened to Kendrick. The process was painstaking and costly, but they believed it was their best chance at uncovering the truth. The re-examination of the evidence brought to light several inconsistencies in the initial investigation. Forensic experts experts pointed out potential flaws in the autopsy report, gaps in the timeline, and unexplored avenues that could have provided critical information. These findings further validated the Johnson family's belief that Kendrick's death had not been adequately investigated. The family's legal team also pursued the possibility of a civil trial, hoping to hold accountable those they believed were responsible for Kendrick's death. This move was met with resistance from some quarters, but the Johnsons were undeterred. They believed that a court of law would be the best place to present their evidence and seek justice for Kendrick. As the legal battles raged on, the emotional toll on the Johnson family was immense. Kenneth and Jackie remained strong for their other children, trying to provide them with a sense of normalcy amidst the chaos. They drew strength from their faith, their community, and the memory of Kendrick, whose spirit they felt guiding them every step of the way. Throughout this ordeal, the Johnsons never lost sight of who Kendrick was. They remembered him not just as a victim, but as a vibrant young man with dreams and aspirations. They spoke often of his love for sports, his infectious smile, and his unwavering determination. Kendrick's memory was their driving force, propelling them forward in their quest for justice. As the second anniversary of Kendrick's death approached, the community of Valdosta prepared to honor his memory. A memorial service was planned, bringing together friends, family, and supporters to reflect on Kendrick's life and the impact he had on those around him. It was a time for healing and remembrance, but also a reaffirmation of the commitment to seek justice. At the memorial, speakers shared stories of Kendrick's kindness, his dedication to his friends and family, and his love for life. There were tears, but also moments of laughter as people recalled the joy he had brought into their lives. The event was a testament to the enduring bond between Kendrick and those who knew him, and a powerful reminder of why the fight for justice was so important. In the months that followed, the Johnson family continued their efforts, undeterred by the challenges they faced. They knew that the road ahead would be long and difficult, but they were prepared to walk it. Few by their love for Kendrick and their unwavering belief in the truth. In the aftermath of the second anniversary of Kendrick Johnson's death, the investigation took on new dimensions. The Johnson family's relentless pursuit of justice kept the case in the public eye, leading to mounting pressure on authorities to re-examine the circumstances surrounding Kendrick's death. The Johnsons, now seasoned in navigating the complexities of legal battles 
and media scrutiny were more determined than ever to uncover the truth. The renewed investigation began with a fresh team of investigators who promised a thorough and impartial review of the evidence. This team, comprised of seasoned detectives and forensic experts, set out to address the many unanswered questions that had plagued the case from the beginning. Their first task was to re-examine the autopsy reports and the evidence collected from the scene where Kendrick's body had been found. One of the most contentious points was the initial autopsy conducted by the Lowndes County Coroner. The Johnson family, unsatisfied with the conclusions drawn, had sought a second opinion, which had indicated possible foul play. To resolve this discrepancy, the new investigation included a third autopsy conducted by an independent forensic pathologist. This autopsy aimed to settle the question of how Kendrick had died once and for all. The findings from this third autopsy were highly anticipated. The results showed signs of blunt force trauma, consistent with the second autopsy report, contradicting the original conclusion of accidental positional asphyxia. This finding was a significant turning point, lending credibility to the Johnson family's claims and raising further questions about the initial investigation investigation's thoroughness and objectivity. With this new evidence in hand, the investigative team expanded their scope. They revisited the school gym, scrutinizing the area where Kendrick's body had been discovered. The gym mats, which had been central to the official account, were re-examined. Investigators noted the tightness of the mats and the difficulty of maneuvering within them, adding doubt to the theory that Kendrick had accidentally trapped himself. Surveillance footage from the school was another critical piece of evidence. The original investigation had been criticized for its handling of the video, which was grainy and had notable gaps. The new team employed advanced forensic video analysis to determine whether the footage had been tampered with. While no definitive proof of tampering was found, the gaps in the footage remained suspicious, suggesting that key moments might have been missed or omitted. As the investigation continued, the focus turned to interviews with students and staff who had been at Lowndes High School on the day of Kendrick's disappearance. Some students recalled seeing Kendrick in the gym, but their accounts varied. Others spoke of tensions and conflicts involving Kendrick, particularly with the two brothers who had been mentioned early on in the case. These brothers were athletes, like Kendrick, and had reportedly had altercations with him in the past. The brothers and their family had consistently denied any involvement in Kendrick's death, but the renewed investigation brought them back into the spotlight. Investigators conducted thorough interviews, examining alibis and looking for any inconsistencies in their statements. The scrutiny was intense, and while no direct evidence linked the brothers to Kendrick's death, the cloud of suspicion lingered. Parallel to the criminal investigation, the Johnson family's legal team pursued civil action. They filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the school, the local law enforcement agencies and the brothers, alleging negligence and conspiracy. The civil case aimed to uncover evidence through the legal discovery process, potentially revealing information that had been overlooked or withheld during the criminal investigation. The legal battle was fierce, with both sides presenting compelling arguments. The Johnson's attorneys argued that the school had failed to protect Kendrick and that the initial investigation had been flawed and biased. The defense countered by emphasizing the lack of direct evidence linking anyone to foul play and maintaining maintaining that Kendrick's death was a tragic accident. Throughout the investigation and legal proceedings, the media played a crucial role in shaping public perception. National news outlets, as well as social media platforms, kept the case in the spotlight. Activists and public figures continued to voice their support for the Johnson family, framing Kendrick's case within the broader context of racial justice and police accountability. The Johnsons themselves became symbols of resilience and determination, their fight for justice resonating with many who had experienced similar struggles. As the case dragged on, the Johnsons faced numerous setbacks. Court rulings, procedural delays, and the emotional toll of reliving their tragedy weighed heavily on them. Yet, they remained steadfast, driven by their love for Kendrick and their unwavering belief that the truth would eventually come to light. One of the key moments in the investigation came when a former school employee came forward with new information. This whistleblower, who had worked at Lowndes High School, claimed to have seen suspicious behavior and heard conversations that suggested a cover-up. The whistleblower's testimony added a new dimension to the case, prompting investigators to revisit certain aspects of the initial investigation. The new information led to subpoenas for additional records and interviews with school officials who had been involved at the time of Kendrick's death. These officials were questioned about their actions and decisions, particularly regarding the handling of evidence and the surveillance footage. The investigation revealed inconsistencies in 
and lapses in protocol, raising further questions about the integrity of the original investigation. As the investigation progressed, the Johnson's legal team uncovered additional evidence that seemed to support their claims. Forensic experts re-examined the materials collected from the scene, including fibers, fingerprints, and other trace evidence. Their analysis suggested that some of the evidence had not been adequately tested or had been misinterpreted in the initial investigation. The focus on forensic evidence brought the investigation to the attention of national forensic experts who offered their assistance. These experts provided new insights and confirmed that the original handling of the evidence had been flawed. Their involvement added credibility to the Johnson family's claims and increased pressure on local authorities to take the case seriously. Despite the mounting evidence and public pressure, the path to justice was fraught with obstacles. The legal system, with its complexities and procedural requirements, often seemed to move at a frustratingly slow pace. The Johnson family had to navigate a maze of legal challenges, all while dealing with their grief and the ongoing public scrutiny. The climax of the investigation came during a highly publicized court hearing, where the evidence was presented in detail. The courtroom was packed with supporters, media, and community members, all eager to hear the latest developments. The Johnson's attorneys laid out their case methodically, presenting forensic evidence, witness testimonies, and expert analyses. The defense, representing the school and the other defendants, pushed back vigorously, challenging the credibility of the evidence and the motivations of the Johnson family. They argued that the case was built on speculation and that there was no concrete proof of foul play. The back and forth between the attorneys was intense, with each side presenting compelling arguments and counter-arguments. In the end, the judge ruled that there was sufficient evidence to proceed with the civil trial. This ruling was a significant victory for the Johnson family, validating their efforts and paving the way for a full examination of the facts. The trial itself would be a long and arduous process, but it represented a crucial step forward in their quest for justice. As the trial date approached, the community of Valdosta remained deeply divided. Some continued to support the Johnson family, believing in their cause and demanding accountability Ability. Others sided with the defendants, convinced that Kendrick's death was a tragic accident and that the case had been blown out of proportion. Throughout this period, the Johnsons found strength in their faith, their community, and their memories of Kendrick. They spoke often of his dreams and aspirations, his love for sports, and his unwavering determination. Kendrick's spirit, they believed, was guiding them every step of the way. The trial began with opening statements from both sides, setting the stage for what would be a lengthy and emotionally charged legal battle. The Johnsons attorney attorneys presented their case meticulously, calling witnesses, presenting forensic evidence, and highlighting the inconsistencies in the original investigation. The defense countered with their own witnesses and experts, challenging the evidence and questioning the motives of the Johnson family. As the trial unfolded, new revelations came to light. Witnesses who had previously been reluctant to speak out now provided crucial testimonies. Forensic experts presented detailed analyses that further undermined the official narrative of an accidental death. The courtroom drama captivated the the nation, drawing attention to the broader issues of justice, accountability, and systemic bias. In the midst of the trial, the Johnson family faced moments of doubt and frustration. The emotional toll was immense, and the legal process was often overwhelming. But they drew strength from their supporters, who rallied around them, offering words of encouragement and acts of kindness. As the trial neared its conclusion, the Johnson family remained hopeful that the truth would finally be revealed. They knew that the road to justice was long and fraught with challenges, but they were prepared to see it through to the end. Kendrick's memory, they believed, deserved nothing less. The trial's closing arguments encapsulated the essence of the case. The Johnson's attorneys emphasized the evidence of foul play and the need for accountability, while the defense argued that the case was built on speculation and that there was no definitive proof of wrongdoing. The judge's decision, they knew, would have far-reaching implications not just for the Johnson family, but for the entire community. In the weeks that followed, the judge reviewed the evidence and testimonies, deliberating on the case. The tension in Valdosta was palpable, as everyone awaited the final verdict. For the Johnson family, it was a time of reflection and anticipation, as they hoped for justice and closure. Finally, the judge issued the ruling, acknowledging the complexities of the case and the validity of the questions raised by the Johnson family. While the ruling did not provide all the answers the Johnsons had sought, it represented a significant step forward in their quest for justice. The case was far from over, but the ruling opened the door for further investigation and potential accountability. The Johnson family, while bittersweet, found solace in the judge's acknowledgement of their efforts 
and the recognition that Kendrick's death warranted further scrutiny. Though the journey was not complete, this ruling was a critical milestone, affirming the importance of their relentless pursuit of truth. With the court's decision, the case was thrust back into the national spotlight. Media coverage intensified, and public interest in Kendrick's story grew. The Johnson family, now seasoned advocates, continued to use their platform to call for justice and raise awareness about their son's case. They were determined to keep the pressure on local authorities and ensure that the investigation remained active and thorough. The ruling also reinvigorated the investigation. Federal authorities took a more active role, reviewing the evidence with a fresh perspective. The involvement of federal investigators brought renewed hope to the Johnson family and their supporters. These new investigators were seen as more impartial and capable of conducting a comprehensive examination of the circumstances surrounding Kendrick's death. One of the key areas of focus for the federal investigators was the surveillance footage. Advanced forensic techniques were employed to analyze the video, and experts were brought in to determine if any tampering had occurred. The results were inconclusive, but the analysis did highlight the gaps and inconsistencies that had plagued the footage from the beginning. In addition to re-examining the surveillance footage, the investigators conducted new interviews with students, teachers, and staff at Lones High School. They sought out individuals who might have been reluctant to speak during the initial investigation, hoping to uncover new leads or corroborate existing theories. These interviews provided valuable insights and helped to piece together a more complete picture of Kendrick's final hours. The investigators also took a closer look at the physical evidence. Advanced forensic techniques, including DNA analysis and trace evidence examination, were applied to the items recovered from the scene. The results were mixed, with some evidence supporting the Johnson family's claims while other findings were inconclusive. However, the thoroughness of the new investigation helped to restore some confidence in the process. As the investigation progressed, the Johnson family continued to face legal challenges. The civil trial, though providing some answers, had not resolved all the questions surrounding Kendrick's death. The Johnson's legal team filed additional motions, seeking further discovery and pushing for a broader inquiry into the actions of local authorities and school officials. Throughout this period, the Johnson family remained a source of inspiration for many. Their unwavering commitment to seeking justice for Kendrick resonated with people across the country. Supporters continued to rally around them, organizing fundraisers, marches, and vigils. These acts of solidarity provided the family with much-needed emotional and financial support, helping them to persevere in their quest for justice. One of the most poignant moments in the Johnson's journey came when they decided to establish a foundation in Kendrick's name. The Kendrick Johnson Foundation aimed to support other families who found themselves in similar situations, providing resources, advocacy, and legal assistance. The foundation quickly became a beacon of hope for many, embodying the Johnson family's commitment to turning their tragedy into a force for positive change. As the third year since Kendrick's death approached, the investigation reached a critical juncture. The federal investigators were nearing the conclusion of their review, and the Johnson family anxiously awaited their findings. The community of Valdosta, too, was on edge, hoping for answers that would bring some measure of closure to the case. In a highly anticipated press conference, the federal investigators presented their findings. They confirmed that Kendrick's death was indeed suspicious and warranted further investigation. While they did not definitively determine the cause of death, their report highlighted significant shortcomings in the initial investigation and called for accountability from local authorities. The Johnson family welcomed the findings, viewing them as a validation of their efforts and a crucial step toward uncovering the truth. They renewed their calls for a full federal investigation and pressed for charges against those they believed were responsible for Kendrick's death and the subsequent cover-up. The federal report also recommended reforms to ensure that similar cases would be handled more transparently and thoroughly in the future. In the aftermath of the press conference, the Johnson family continued to advocate for justice, both for Kendrick and for other victims of injustice. Their story became a catalyst for broader conversations about systemic issues in the criminal justice system, particularly concerning the treatment of African-American victims and the accountability of law enforcement. The fight for justice for Kendrick Johnson was far from over, but the progress made represented a significant victory for the Johnson family and their supporters. Their unwavering determination had brought the case to national attention, prompting critical examination and calls for change. Kendrick's legacy, as a young man full of promise and potential, continued to inspire and drive the quest for truth and justice. As the years passed, the Johnson family
family remained steadfast in their commitment to Kendrick's memory. They continued to push for answers, working closely with federal investigators and legal experts. Their journey was marked by setbacks and triumphs, moments of despair and hope, but through it all, they never wavered in their belief that justice would prevail. The community of Valdosta, too, evolved in response to Kendrick's case. Conversations about race, justice, and accountability became more prominent, leading to changes in local policies and practices. The Johnson family's efforts had sparked a movement, one that aimed to ensure that no other family would have to endure the pain and uncertainty they had faced. In the end, the story of Kendrick Johnson is one of resilience, determination, and the unyielding pursuit of justice. It is a story that challenges us to confront difficult truths and to strive for a world where every life is valued and every question is answered. Kendrick's legacy lives on through the actions of his family and supporters, a testament to the power of love and the enduring fight for justice. As we conclude our exploration into the tragic story of Kendrick Johnson, we're left with more questions than answers. His death remains a haunting mystery, one that has exposed deep-seated issues within the justice system and sparked a movement for accountability and transparency. The Johnson family's unyielding pursuit of justice serves as a powerful reminder of the strength and resilience that love can inspire. Their fight is not just for Kendrick, but for every individual who seeks truth and fairness in the face of adversity. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Remember, every story we tell here at Whispers of the Guilty is a testament to the complexities of human nature and the dark shadows that sometimes fall upon us. Keep these stories close to your heart and never stop seeking the truth. Until next time, stay vigilant and compassionate. This has been Silence and you've been listening to Whispers of the Guilty.